the State Department Communication Center in Washington, preparations are in full swing for the World Security Conference at San Francisco. Through this center flows a steady stream of plans and messages to and from the participating nations of the world. Secretary of State Stettinius, Soviet Ambassador Gromyko, and British Ambassador Earl Halifax represent their countries in preliminary arrangements. Foundations for the San Francisco meeting were laid last year at Dumbarton Oaks by these three nations and China, represented here by Ambassador Tao Ming Wei. <laughs> Assistant Secretary of State Archibald McLeish explains the basic purpose of the World Security Organization. The whole organization has one simple but daring purpose, to stop wars and improve the lot of men by bringing nations together around a table to discuss their common problems, to remove the causes of war, and to stop wars by every means, peaceful and forcible, from starting. Headquarters of United States Admiral of the Fleet, Chester Nimitz, on the island of Guam. Under his five-star flag, Admiral Nimitz orders the opening of another smashing Pacific offensive, this time against the Ryukyu Islands, stretching in a long chain directly southwest of Japan. First, combined forces attack the Karamaretto group off the Ryukyus. Then the large island of Okinawa, great Japanese sea and air base. The mighty fifth fleet puts to sea. Admiral Turner and General Simon Bolivar Buckner direct operations of the amphibious force, one of the largest in history. Off Caramaretto, heavy bombardment begins. Rocket fire plows up enemy cave defenses on shore. carrying barges swarm ashore against light opposition. Moving inland, the first village is taken. The island civilians are assembled under the direction of the American military government. The Karamaretto Islands are one. Now, the great base of Okinawa, largest and most important in the strategic Ryukyu Islands, comes under final attack. of the 10th Army, including an army and a marine amphibious corps, number perhaps 100,000. Okinawa's large Japanese garrison puts up almost no resistance on the beaches.
Okinawa will provide an offensive base against Formosa, the China coast, or Japan itself, only 365 miles away. After yielding vital ground, the enemy here has now begun to fight back. But he will be destroyed, and Okinawa will be won. Washington, D.C., three eminent spokesmen for labor and business, William Green, Eric Johnston, and Philip Murray, meet to sign an agreement to promote cooperative post-war industrial relations in the United States. William Green, president of the American Federation of Labor, signs for his union. For the Council of Industrial Organizations, Philip Murray, president. And representing business management, Eric Johnston, president of the United States Chamber of Commerce. Through this new charter, labor and management agree to preserve in peacetime the harmony which has been a solid base for the vast American war production achievement. From airfields on the continent and in England, thousands of airborne troops prepare to strike in support of the Allied ground armies which are raging through central Germany. Veteran American and British parachute and glider-borne veterans of the 1st Allied Airborne Army form the assault force. the advances of Eisenhower's great army groups under Montgomery, Bradley, and Devers, 1,500 troop-carrying planes are off. From both sides of their big transports, American paratroops spill out. gliders over the objective are cut loose by the towplane pilots and land swiftly. Most come down safely, but some crack up on landing. anti-aircraft fire brings down a transport. But the attack continues. The airborne troopers quickly organize for the offensive. They advance on enemy positions in jeeps which landed with them, striking to help complete the annihilation of the German armies. 